but let's play some games and make some magic. Welcome back, everybody, to the Verdigree Table. I am Ryan Doyle, and joining me today from beyond the screen to your screen is Aviad. Aviad, thank you so much for joining us. It's, a, it's an exciting time for you to be here. How are you today? Thank you for having me, man. This is I'm very excited for this. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, you have uh, the Book of Spirits is like about to drop. I'm gonna I'm gonna release this on the day it is dropping. So links links wherever all of the links are everywhere. Um, go click them and check out the the backer kit and or the Kickstarter depending on when you are watching this. But um, I'm super excited about this project. But I'm gonna you explain it because you're probably gonna do a better job than I am. <laughs> what well... what is the Book of Spirits? <laughs> Well, the Book of Spirits is essentially an expansion to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons that brings the spirit world into d and um, It's very much inspired by the worlds of Dragon Age or Stormlight Archive, where there's another layer. Yeah, I see, I see it. <laughs> uh, where there's another layer above the physical realm where magical things happen, and there are creatures in there, ethereal in nature, that are somehow connected to emotions. And this is the concept that the Book of Spirits really explores. It's taking uh, emotions and memories and turning them into magic. I love that. From what I've seen, because I got a little I got a little sneak peek preview. So I like doing the show. Um, from what I've dived into, I really want, I just really like it uh, like flavor wise, narratively. Like that's the good stuff. That's kind of what I wish there was more of that. Like we have the Feywild, we have the Shadowfell, but they just, they're not quite weird enough or different enough or like specific enough. Um, there's not a ton of support, at least whatever, first party perspective. So I love the, I love the idea of like, here is this like emotional pool that is creating these these creatures and these abilities and these spells and these powers there's really i've been I, I'm, I'm a big fan of monsters as the forever dm the subclass is cool uh the spells are awesome but like i really like the fact that you have merged these thematic elements with mechanics mm -hmm. like that is that is the good stuff for me where it's like okay this is this is consequential and in a really brilliant way where you take the character's emotions i mean there's a lot of like things that are tied into actions which i really like on the monster side of things um but the the idea that like how you are role playing your character is going to have mechanical effects and i think you guys are doing it very well there's been many attempts <laughs> that haven't been uh as successful so like if you just d dive into the thinking on that a little bit yeah um well it, it's very important to us to create a narrative that then informs uh game design right um so with this we have created another plane that is distinct from the Feywild and uh and Shadowfell and it has its own unique way that it functions and works so if you bring this realm into your home games, you kind of accept that emotions and memories also have power mm -hmm. in your setting. Uh, this is the, this is not like a world uh, per se. It's something that you bring into the world, another realm that you um, import, if you will. Uh, and the resonance system is is another thing that ties it all together. So essentially, uh, when you encounter spirits, when you face spirits, um, you can channel your character's emotion, and that can um, and that can either weaken or strengthen the spirit that you encounter. So the, the simplest example is that if you are fighting a rage spirit and you are a barbarian who enters rage as a bonus action and you are swinging your axe wildly, running at it, there's a good chance your your action, is filled with anger and you are going to empower the race spirit that you are fighting. Um, now there is, there is a, a lot of back and forth on this. We don't, we've, we work really hard on maintaining uh, agency in this scenario because it's very tricky to, when you take emotions of, of characters, there's a lot of assumptions that might be in there. We, we take that all in. It's all an opt in mechanic. Um, we also are very careful about this, not uh, bogging down combat. We want this to be ingrained into the flow of combat to create something that is more dramatic, um, but also that you don't only work on emotions in combat. You still want to 
you know, roll some dice, deal damage, do your epic combos and, and whatnot. This is just another layer to bring more of um, character role play and backstory and some, some more emotion into a scenario that sometimes can turn into a slugfest. And I think by by marrying the two mechanically, the the you know, because okay, not not every supplement is for every person, right? Not not every table out there is looking for like I want to add role play, um, I want to delve deeper into character emotion, but like one I do, um, and two the the tables that are doing that often kind of let that go in the midst of combat because now it becomes a strategy war game and like D&D fifth edition is essentially like eight games stapled together <laughs> yes. and taking, taking that role play element and giving it mechanical weight and heft. And like, if I, you know, if I heal this character, then um, I am, I am stifling the spirit. And if I, you know, all, all these you know, everyone loves a troll because there's like, oh, there's a, there's a, I know a thing about this character, this kind of monster, and now I'm better at dealing with it. Um, and it's just that all day, but it's about the the role play aspect in combat. So you're getting, you're you're marrying those both, which in my experience often feel disconnected at a lot of tables. So yes, the exactly strategy power gamer is going to be just as interested <laughs> in it as the, you know, the theater kid uh, who, who just wants to, you know, role play. Um, exactly. They have an incentive to a, a mechanical incentive to role play their character, which is fun, which is kind of the goal here. Uh, but also for the DM, they could also call for resonance at in specific points of time. For example, uh, one of the examples we use is, um, that the party is facing this spirit of despair and it's uh, sucking the life one of, uh, out of one of the characters. And then the DM stops and say, hey, does anyone, is anyone filled with despair watching this? It gives them an opportunity to, to role play. If someone says, yes, yes, the spirit becomes stronger, but you also get like a mechanical benefit. You get an, a die that is similar to a bardic inspiration that you can then use later on. Uh, so it adds another layer to this, um, to dramatic moments, to not just uh, shock the players with them, but also kind of get, take that uh, into the game um, deliberately. Yeah, and I like the idea of it being like a, not quite an overlay, right? But you, and so in a lot of ways, it feels like the elemental aspect like like the spirit emotion uh memory is being treated the, the way we treat like elements somewhat in 5e um so the idea that there are like particular like times and places actually there's some cool stuff about that too in the supplement but the uh you know the idea like this is how this works here and now i think a lot of folks are like do i want to use this particular rule set in every aspect of my game for all time in this three-year campaign or whatever but like i'm a big fan of taking a taking a just a, a little jaunt into a place maybe something happens here that has created this like thinning of the veil to this other side that's always there but here it's actually like making more of an impact um tangentially yes. you could also have a character role in who themselves is creating that uh thinning of the veil by bringing it carrying it with them essentially yeah oh, that's actually a cool concept uh um, take, i mean take it but yeah i mean i'm just talking about the the subclass if someone rolls up uh yeah uh, there's, there's, there's a class a, yeah. there's a class um a new character a new uh, playable class it's called the conduit which essentially allows uh the character to to fuse with spirits um, it's sort of a half caster, so you get all the, the, you're a bit beefy, a bit tanky, you can stand in the front line, but you also have access to some spells like a paladin would. Um, although, although it packs less of a punch than a paladin does, it has a little more versatility because you can choose which spirit you bond with, and that actually gives you different features. So um, if you bond with a spirit of rage, for example, you can uh, retaliate uh, when people attack you or in, or deal increased damage with an attack, um, and there are there are eight. We use eight core emotions to describe this. There's actually a wheel. Um, we we call I think it's called the Pluchik's wheel of emotions. Mm. Um, and we have kind of based a lot of the mechanics and lore 
on eight core emotions and then maybe fusing them, uh, creating combinations of them to create more complex uh, creations. But the conduit chooses one of the eight or more as they go up in levels. And, uh, and that allows them to change their spec just a bit um, for what they need to do at the moment. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I like the um, the 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 graphic of the of the wheel, and it's almost like uh, it, it felt like alignment to me when I was first looking at it. But it has this like again, like it all feels very elemental to me. I guess emotions and elements are I don't know similar or, or metaphors in my mind. Um, but yeah, I'm also getting like little flashes of Inside Out, the Pixar movie of like the little, yeah, exactly. Like, just, yeah, <laughs> there's a bunch of different people in your head, and like, okay, who's who's driving right now, and just making that a Absolutely. mechanical like, yeah, ah, I love it. Uh, and we went with elementals, by the way, for the creature type. Yeah, we went with elementals because because it 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 fits. It a lot of people say they should be undead, but these these entities were never alive. They were they are they form in response to this energy. Uh, so the closest thing there is, is, is we have in 5e is, is elemental to that. So we treat this as another, almost like another elemental plane. Um, but uh, sometimes we also, so first where we started, we, we kind of, uh, it was just the ethereal plane. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to make it into its own thing. And it can also act like as an additional layer to the ethereal plane. So uh, if you bring the Book of Spirits into your setting, then your ethereal plane is actually the spirit realm and does the, has the functions of both, um, which I think is fun. Yeah, I always, I don't know if you would approve of this, but I always look at the thing and say, like, okay, how can I adapt this, right? How can I, like, wh where where could this fit, right? I want, like, variety and options. So it could be an elemental plane. It could be, I could take the Feywild and the Shadowfell and just smash them together and make it this. I could take the... Um, yeah, the, the the ethereal was definitely in my in my mind, especially with a couple of the like the abilities and like where the the magic's being drawn from, and like just this. Uh, I guess it's just the dimensions. It's just like this overlay that's like just below the surface that some people access and some people don't. Um, so yeah, re really good stuff. Again, go 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 check it out. Um, awesome stuff. I'm actually going to throw it to the commercial, which I don't usually do, but this commercial is dope. So uh, <laughs> check it out, and we'll be right back, and we're going to play D20 Questions. The spirit realm is never far. They... They are always watching. Our hopes and dreams give them life. But so does our darkness. My mother used to say that spirits were drawn to me like moths to a flame, urging me to be mindful of my emotions. I wish I had listened. Perhaps she would still be here. I spent years in self-imposed exile, seeking refuge in silence and distance. An emotionless, hollow shell, lest I attract my nightmares again. No more. I'm done running, and I am not fighting alone. Each of us has a reason to be here. Don't let anger guide your blades, and we'll only make it stronger. Hope will be your shield. Valor will light the path to victory. Let's show that spirit what we're made of. The spirit realm is never far. And now, I'm the one who's watching. All right, and we are back. Check that out. If you are uh, smart enough and lucky enough to be watching this while the Kickstarter is, is running, there's a bunch of other cool stuff you can get your hands on, including minis, which are very, uh, very enticing. I love such just, again, the, the, the monsters here are <laughs> my, my bread and butter, so that's what I am drawn to. And uh, yeah, you want to surprise your players with some new and interesting stuff you know throw, throw those down the next time you're uh rolling initiative um Heck but okay yes. we are going to play 
our game here, D20 questions. Aviad, if you could roll a D20 for me, please. Let's see. Let's do that. What we talking about today? That is a 15. Do, 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 15. 15. All right. Name a moment that would be on your TTRPG highlight reel. Like what's what's on the best of album? Oh boy. Uh, well, I have a few from mm. being a player and a few from being a DM. I'll take I'll, a, I'll, the... I'll take one of each if you want. <laughs> okay, we can try that. All right, I'll start with a DM moment. Um, I've had a campaign, like a very long campaign, happening for a few years, and one of the uh, one of the player characters, um, like one of the she, she was like an orphan, um, and. There was a prophecy about her. She's a cleric of, of uh, the knowledge goddess. And on her quest to decipher the prophecy, she had reached a large temple um, with a silver dragon that was the head priest. And, and then you know, there was a big conversation, a lot of lore revelations, but there was one moment uh, where the dragon went, Ariana, I am your father. And everyone at the table were just like, what's going on? <laughs> so it's it's totally that look, I am your father moment. Yes. <laughs> steal steal what you love. That's the best way to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh that was something. Uh, surprise, dragon dad. Dragon dad every time. Um yeah. And Epic. If, as a player, I think one of the moments I had most enjoyed was um, I played this rogue character, inquisitive rogue, who had a big conflict with the government of the city that he was born in, and it was like this entire um, majocracy. Um, and they had because his father did not have magic, they have treated him terribly. So he went uh, rogue and decided to to do what he can to help the little folks who don't have access to magic and to topple the government or at least or at least find a, a helper the representatives who are uh less about dominating um everyone and more about making the world better with their magic uh and there was this like this um political speech for one of the characters that he supported and uh, the DM was describing this entire, you know, um, grand scene with so many people um, and, and magic and flair. Um, and I, I just felt that something was off. So as he was describing, I was I told I told him, like, I'm, I'm getting closer to the stage. I'm, I'm pushing through the crowd. And and at that moment, uh I noticed the assassin that was coming at him from the back and I was able to intervene mm -hmm. and prevent uh, his death. And that to me was like one of the best moments I could, I could possibly get as a rogue because this is what my character was meant to do. Yes. And it matters to, it matters to them so much. And, it, and it's like so fulfilling. I love that. I rogues are some of my favorite when I do when I do get to play a character as a forever DM. Um, I love rogues because it's just like the mobility and the the skill set and the, all right. I don't have access. I mean, I like arcane tricksters, but even so, like I don't have like a ton of access to like spells. I have to get uh, I have to get creative and thoughtful, mm. and I don't I don't have a instant like hold person. So like I need to be in the right place at the right time. And I also like, you know, it takes one to know one, right? Like the assassin's going to be the guy who catches the assassin. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah. Good, good stuff. I'll just kind of like, yeah, it took me somewhere. Uh, roll, roll a D20 for me, please. Let's get another, let's get another question. Let's go. Uh, seven. A seven. What is a seven? A seven. Uh, other sources of inspiration for your uh, TTRPGs. So um, let's let's go big. The uh, the Star Wars reference we just had. Uh, where else do you do you draw inspiration for? I mean, your home game or your characters, a book of spirits. Um, well, um, yeah, like I've mentioned, uh, the book of spirits is inspired very much inspired by Dragon Age. 
uh, all of the games are just you know cl close close to the heart. Everything I do is almost has something <laughs> from it, just because it's one of the my favorite um, worlds and and their storytelling, characters, dialogue, everything. Bioware did at that time just felt so right. Um, and I'm also a very big Sander, uh, Brandon Sanderson fan. Mm. So, you know, uh, um, Mistborn, Stormlight Archive in particular. Um, many of his other books, um, I, I think I read almost all of them <laughs> at this point. <laughs> So these are the biggest two, I feel. I also have others, like Avatar Last Airbender is cool. is also here. Mm -hmm. uh, and also some of the Spirit Realm stuff is definitely inspired from there. That um, shines through, actually. That makes a lot of sense to me. I can see, I can see, I kept coming back to like, okay, this is like elemental, emotional tie-in. And that's like, yeah, that's, uh, that's Korra too, but that's definitely Aang. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. And we didn't, uh, I pointed at the Sanderson on my shelf here, but like, woo, Mistborn, um, it's, it does, he does some stuff right. And the stuff that he does right is the world building, the, like, the yes. magic systems, plural, and just, it's, and like the history and the politics and like the, the, like the, cultural like relevance of what happened centuries ago a lot of people are like this is the way it is and i fall into this trap too this is the way things are right now because this is what's happening right now but it's like mm, the reason they're celebrating this festival they, they kind of don't remember like it's something happened 800 years ago um and like yes, and that exactly. makes your world feel so much more rich uh and again it's a, that that emotional r resonance and that like memory that like cultural memory maybe the people don't have it anymore but like it it exists somewhere in this overlay exactly uh, the spirit realm remembers the spirit realm remembers ooh tagline put that on the back of the book uh <laughs> uh all right let's roll let's roll some more dice because uh honestly that's what we're here to do rolling dice is fun let's go let's go uh eight 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 uh oh this is getting a little more uh youtube -y now or at least my youtube -y. piece of advice that new dungeon masters should hear but rarely if ever do there's a lot mm. of advice out there but there's yep. some stuff that they don't talk about as much well um i've actually also created a few youtube videos specifically about uh running games and dming um, my focus was more on world building and storytelling, but I also gave some, you know, um, more advice that rel relates to communication. And I think that's, that's one of the fields or, or the, the topics, um, and skills, I guess, that DMs don't necessarily have when they start. Um, but here's, here's a piece of advice that I don't hear a lot, but is very, very true, is that uh, players won't always tell you what's on their mind. And many times I hear from DMs that they think that their players are not enjoying their game simply because they're not saying anything. Mm. Um, players sometimes think that because they were there with you and that they enjoyed so much, it's obvious, it should be obvious how much fun they've, they're having. Uh, but they don't really understand how it feels to be on the other side of the screen. So they don't, they don't go on about it and tell you. So mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of DMs feel insecure about their sessions, about their games, just because they don't get the feedback. So I guess, I guess my tip is first, um, if the players don't say anything, it doesn't mean you know, it was bad. And also on the positive side, talk with the players, ask them about the game. Um, don't wait for them to tell you things. And and yeah, and I'm sure they're having more fun than they let on. A thousand percent. That speaks to me so much. I've had, I've run a lot of games with a lot of players in my day and I've had one person say thank you. And it happened fairly recently. Um, 
and it was like the, the the first time he was at my table and he was like a super polite guy right <laughs> but he's like thank you i really appreciate it you're a good dm and i was just like oh my god thank you like no one ever says that like <laughs> thank you so much i've had i don't even know how many players i've had at my table it was like it was a, the first for me um and yeah it was deeply gratifying so one players let them know they're we're, yes. we're, they're working they're working for you um but two dungeon masters show them love show them so, love show them love <laughs> show them love and there's a lot of like uh there's some insecurity involved because it's a performance you know you get up on a, a stage for three four hours at a time and um so if you're a game master out there and you're not sure if your players are having a good time or not a good litmus test that i tell people all the time did they come back <laughs> that's yeah that time and attention is the the most precious commodity we have. So if you're if your friends or whatever your family your players are coming back to spend hours and hours and hours of their time with you, they're enjoying it. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, communication is huge and is not really it's not in the rules of the game, right? You you can yeah go yeah, get a it's, masters. I'm, in... I'm still amazed that you know. Uh, Fifth edition player's handbook, and there's next to nothing about actually facilitating a gaming group, mm, which is mm, mm. oftentimes the thing that the DM has to do when they start, because the players aren't going to do that. Um, right. We have to go to other resources, to YouTube videos, to third-party publishers. I think they added a few more, a few of that. Uh, I don't remember where. They first wrote about session zero. Was it in Tasha's or somewhere? I they think mentioned Tasha's. it. I don't think it was. Um, it's Xanathar's or it's Tasha's, and I think it's Tasha's. I think it's pretty. I mean, I guess Tasha's isn't that new. It still feels new to me. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it was Tasha's. I think you're right. I, I hope to see more of that in the um, horror books because DMs need that kind of guidance when they start. I am most looking forward to. I have mixed feelings about what to expect from one D and D, and I'm kind of like holding out to to have it in my hands to judge it. Um, but I am the most, um, let's say, curious about the the Dungeon Masters Guide. They've recognized the flaws in the current in the 2014 one. Um, so yeah, looking looking forward to that because it's interesting. You don't the dungeon master is the narrator and is the referee and is also the administrator and the scheduling person and uh part-time psychologist, maybe. And like it's yeah, there's a lot of roles that we are fulfilling, and I think some of those roles should get uh acknowledged one and then like spread around the table too. If you're talking Delegate. about Del delegate and communicate, man. Yes. Um. Oof, yeah. That's the next. That's the next. Uh. I don't know. A playlist. A, a video won't even do that. Uh. Give me one more. D twenty, please. Uh. That was great. That was a great piece of advice. Uh. Ooh, almost a four percent. Nine nine. Number nine. Uh. Ooh. Okay. Corollary. Uh. What common or popular piece of advice out there? Uh, or maybe like a take, uh, do you disagree with? What do you think people are hearing that uh, or maybe they shouldn't be? Um, I think, actually, I'd go with um, metagaming. You know, there's a lot of hate about metagaming. Mm -hmm. uh, power, gaming, power gamers use information outside of the game to change how they act. Mm -hmm. um, and there are certainly bad forms of metagaming. But saying that you should never meta game, I think that's that misses a few potential um, just opportunities to make in an amazing story. Um, and if, if one example that comes to mind is say you're playing this um, very very dumb character. You're you have like an int of five or six, um, and you as a player realize that the DM just described something that is obviously a trap. You know that. But you decide out of game that your character does not understand any of it and just walks into it. Mm. You make a, a, an informed decision with out of game knowledge to change how your character would act. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't bat an eye. Maybe you just let the other players take the lead. But you decide to take action and fall into the trap because it creates a better story, because it makes, uh, you know, it's fun. Um, and I think 
I think that the the real kind of um, advice that it should be is if you do meta game, do it for the right reasons. Mm. Mm. I like that a lot because it's kind of I, th I think impossible <laughs> to like this the like hard and fast like meta gaming bad like forget everything you know about. Uh, all of these videos that you've watched, all of these books that you've read, all of this time that you spent thinking about the game outside of the game, uh, put out, put forget all of that, even though it's your favorite part of this, and uh, now act from zero. Like it's an, it's a very you know you could spend twenty years in a monastery before you get to do that, right? Like, but the idea of doing it right, doing it well, right? Like using all of the knowledge that you as a person have gained, and all that the and the dungeon master has given to you to not win the game not to make the biggest number possible but to like to create the most compelling story to have the most interesting thing right like uh i love a good character i love the character who pushes the button yes like, the other the Absolutely. players someone else at the table is gonna be like why would you do that it was obvious it's a, like it's gonna be a trap it's like i'll roll a new character man i want to know what happens when the button gets pushed <laughs> so exactly and the dm goodness. wants to, to know that too because they put the button the button there hmm. Uh, yeah. obviously <laughs> that's great when i my, my like session zero or like uh, even like preset my my player intake uh i admit to running a very like heavy metagamey uh little table most of the time one i like bring i bring in new players a lot so that's my like passion so like we're we're i we're going to discuss the rules and the mechanics of the game because this person over here has never played before and there's a lot of rules and mechanics that are not necessarily easy to pick up right away um but also like that's some, some of the best stuff it's like our your character knows more than you do because they can see more than you do so and again, communicating at the table is going to create both of those situations are creating the best possible outcome. And I think it's I think it's a I think that's the real question. Like, what are we metagaming for? You're never going to stop. So what are we what what's the goal here to be the, the to create the truest possible thing or to to make big numbers good and like speed? So you're trying to like speed run D and D. You're you're trying to win so we can go home I mean, like, what's the point there here? are many reasons people play and that's mm, fine it's true it's okay. um, i'm getting a little preachy <laughs> no i i mean I, i'm i'm also not a fan of meta like the, the the form of metagaming that that annoys me the most personally is when people for example if there are two scenes happening at the table the part if they split the party and then one of them uh one of the characters gets into trouble then the other group decides to check in on their character all of a sudden mm. Uh, that that's the kind of meta gaming that I'm like, mm, really, really, no, that that's that that sucks. I, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Um, and there's meta gaming that is sort of okay. I mean, you mentioned trolls earlier, <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, unless trolls are very different in your world, maybe it's there's some lore about uh, trolls being vulnerable to fire, so. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's okay. Maybe the DM will ask you to make a roll for it. Maybe it's fine to ask the DM, hey, would I know the trolls, um, you know, don't regenerate if you burn them? And the DM might say, you know what, maybe you do, or give me a nature check. Mm. Um, and I feel that kind of metagaming is, is, is fine. It's you okay. Are you're playing uh, an adventurer you're playing a so this person has decided to go into the dungeon i mean mo most of the time maybe they wake up a prisoner in the underdark or something but like most of the time your person has like chosen this as a career path and maybe has done a little bit of homework um, yep so yeah good good stuff good stuff um all right give me one more d20 i think this is fine let's yeah. go let's rock uh 13 hanging out right in the middle here today uh ooh what is on your dungeon master screen or in your in your dm kit hmm um well i think it's pretty much the standard dm screen but i also have um like the passive values of all the characters mm -hmm. passive perception passive insight all of that i have a list of names at hand I sometimes print a uh, uh, few of the names of uh, relevant NPCs just so I can 
either remember them or just, you know, we can, I know what people are talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, not much. Most of it is, is on, in my session notes. Like I have a few pages of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have my prep and then the DM screen, uh, dice, miniatures. I like these, um, you know, there's dry erase um, screens where you can track initiative. Mm. Those I really like because, and there, there is like, um, you can, you can have little magnets and you can write the names on the magnets and then you can just move them around. That's um, really smart. I've, I've that's very mm. useful. Mm -hmm. Stolen. Yes. Good. Do it. Yeah. Cause I just, I, there's a whiteboard somewhere in this room. It's like, I want to use this for initiative instead of like writing it down on paper every time. Um, yeah. I think, I think even but, Pathfinder has this like as a product. Oh, um, ISO makes good stuff. Yes, they make ISO makes the best stuff. stuff. They really they, do. Mm -hmm. The somewhere behind the beginner beginner box. I never know how to move in this room. The beginner box uh, is chock full of like cool little. Just, uh, it's, just, it's just brilliant. ISO makes great tools. Um, but I like this magnet idea. It's funny. I always I always start a new campaign with everybody's passives, like AC, passive perception, passive insight, and it keeps things rolling. And then like. Well, you level up a lot of times really quick, and it's just like, all right, I'll 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 write it back down at like level seven when we slow down with the progression again. <laughs> mm. um, yep. But yeah, having people's passives is great, and then the lists of names is like huge. That's that's one of my favorite things to like slide into yes. my DM screen, be it be it important wow. NPCs or just like, what's this guard's name? It's like, uh, hold please, Bob. processing Bob. Every always Bob. Always Bob. So uh, many Bobs. So many Bobs in this Sorry. world. Sorry, her name is Bob. I've Sorry. used it like a oh. hundred times. <laughs> Apologies to Bob World Builder, uh, but he knows. Um, we, love him. we love him. What's up, Bob? The uh, let, let's do one more. I'm feeling it. Let's roll. Let's roll one more yeah. d20 before What's we. the short one? the short one? Before we transition. <laughs> uh, 16. 16, 16. Uh, whew, you're getting all the advicey ones. What's common yeah. advice really <laughs> only applies? To to more advanced dungeon masters. So something mm. that is out there that uh, a new person might hear that could actually maybe get them into trouble. Oh, that's a good one. Let's transition. Um, okay. Here's one. Um, so the more you DM, the more you realize that everything you do at the table matters. Um, the way you arrange things, the way the room is organized, the way you speak, the words you use, everything you do matters. It changes the experience. Um, and now if you tell that to a new DM, it might paralyze them. They might never <laughs> go for it. But when you look at it from a, an experienced perspective of, you know, I know how to run a game. I've done it a few times. Um, uh, this is something I can, there's always more room to grow uh, type of situation. So you can always practice more voices. You can um, work on your pacing, on, your, on the cadence of your speech, uh, on the words you choose to use, on the amount that you choose to describe. Everything matters. Some things are more engaging. Some things create a specific emotions with your players. The music that you might use or not um, has a dramatic effect on on what people are experiencing. So I think I think that um, almost you know there is this saying uh, that the me uh, the medium is the message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You heard that phrase mm -hmm. before? Yes. It's very much true for uh, for DMing. Thinking about how you're portraying things is almost as important as the words you choose to you choose in doing so. Yeah, and that's a that's advanced DMing. That was a really good answer, actually. The yeah, because at first you're so concerned about like get, getting the rules right, um, and I think there's a corollary. Like you learn you learn stuff by doing stuff. So you learn what works for you with your natural inclinations and skills and also like just your own mm, background and where you've come from and like what you've absorbed from other media over time but uh you also learn your audience so when i sit down at a new table with new players like a thing that i did that worked really well 
um, you know, this this person is very erudite and uses large words, and therefore they are the the resource to come to to get quests and identify magic items. And it's just like, I don't trust this guy. He's too smart. It's like, what this guy? This was supposed to be the quest giver for the next five six sessions. Like, and now I guess he's the bad guy because you all. I don't know what I just did to make you hate this person, but and d different people respond to different things. You got to know your you got to know your audience. Um, so you never you're always learning. You never you never stop learning either the, the again it's communication there's a million kinds of communication be it the the music right like i used to do a lot with playlists um, i love that i love using music in games man mm -hmm. this is i've had uh in my session prep uh i used to pick like specific tracks for moments that i anticipated would happen and i would just when we were transitioning, just transition into this too. And pe people would know it's all because, because the medium is the message. They know that something bad is coming because they put an ominous tune mm -hmm. um, or it's, it's, or it's the things are chill and fun right now because they're in a tavern and there's this happy tune. Um, so it's, it's really nice. I, I, I really enjoy using that. Uh, I, I always look for more tracks to kind of expand the repertoire of, um, of my DM kit, or Bo if you will. Bonus question: What uh, what do you draw? For? I do a lot of like movie soundtracks and like video games. What's on What's on the playlist? What are your like go tos? Mostly video games. Yeah. So, uh, Witcher stuff, Dragon Age stuff, Pillars of Eternity, uh, Divinity Original Sin. Um, I, I haven't DM'd in a bit, so uh, but I'll probably steal some uh, Baldur's Gate tracks <laughs> when I get back to it. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that these are the biggest. Although there, I do p pick like there are a few randoms that I pick from other spaces as well. I have a few from um, Mass Effect mm. that are really great. Um, but yeah, mostly video games. Uh, TV and, and movie stuff tend to be too, to change too often. So it's very hard to keep that mood. And video games are designed first to be loopable mm -hmm. and then also to have this. Th this is the music where, you know, you're fighting right now. This is the, this is what we're doing. Um, and it doesn't work the same with movies and TV shows, I, f I find. It's true. I've had a couple of those experiences of like using a movie soundtrack and it's like, this is the moment where things happen. And it's like, well, well I, mean, I wish that happened in five minutes or five minutes ago. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah. Video game music is more, it's, uh, more of a level. Um, it's just like boss fight the whole time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like, yeah, uh, I like lo-fi tavern music too. Sometimes I'm just like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Like where you can lean back a little bit, relax. This is the opposite of boss fight music. Um, yes. Absolutely. That's fun. Awesome. Hey, everybody watching in the comments, give me your best uh, whatever recommendations for Dungeon Master playlists, because I love that stuff. Uh, yes. We are going to take Please a quick do. break for, for everybody's sake. Um, we're going to be right back and we're going to roll, <laughs> excuse me, on the Game Master's Compendium of Explosive Creation. Woo. All right. Let's go. Let's go. roll. All right, we are back. We are making an emissary, which is one of my favorites because it's got a lot of like specificity to it. It kind of defines some of the world building elements like out of the gate, but it also I, I like how those limits create more opportunities for creativity. Um, that's just how my weird brain works. But um, oh yeah, we're going to take one of each die type and roll them all at once because that's that's the most fun way to do it. So uh, okay, ro okay, roll let's a go. Let's go. Full of dice, please and thank you. Okay, I have it. Cool. Um, out of the gate, I should say, do you have much of like? Do you have a character concept going into this? Are we like blank slate here? I have some ideas. Okay. Um, because the emissary, uh, so I, I, when I, when I, uh, saw that word, uh, I had a few, a few thoughts. First is that, um, an emissary to the spirit realm is such mm -hmm. an interesting concept. Um, cause either, either to, to talk like with spirits about things that affect the material plane or to, or, or the other way around kind of be between two realms. It's, I think that's, that's very interesting. So that one concept that I kind of 
already wrote some adventures on and, you know, all of that. Uh, also, another thing, though, Emissary is the working name of another class that I have not yet published. Oh. Um, that also is uh, in touch with the spirit realm, essentially, where the conduit fuses with spirits and unleashes power. And Emissary um, has these... A relationship with spirits and they can they can call upon ally spirit allies to help them um Sad. so uh mm. yeah the, the, like i i saw this word and i'm like yes this let's do let's go with that however that all being said i'm i'm all for creating something fresh and uh improvise and see where that takes us well well i uh, i i like all of the above is always my answer on the test like give me <laughs> give me both so i liked i like again having like limits and like the the connections that start to form like you can bring stuff into to this tool yeah. um so... you know there's there's a saying by i think uh most recent i've heard this from mark rosewater uh that said that uh, uh, he's um game designer on magic the lead i think or was i don't know uh he said that limitations breed creativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i resonate with that very much and this is this is it that's exactly it um okay so with the caveat that you can we can uh if something else jumps out at you that makes more sense you can always choose it um also if you're like ah, oh, that's okay but it would be better if oh, awesome that's also that means it's doing its job <laughs> um but what did you get on the D20? This is going to be our character's I got a, motivation. I got a six. Six. Uh, foster exchange between cultures. I mean, that feels Ooh. that feels right. What does that What does that make you think of? Um, well, if we take the spirit realm example, we can think about um, if there are specific spirits, for example, of joy, or um fear we could have a society almost create rituals like uh, habits have every week or every month have a celebration if it's a joy spirit and and you know uh, festivities to uh, promote that emotion to propagate that emotion and feed the spirits or maybe like a Almost like a Halloween where people try to scare each other. Mm. Uh, if it's a fear, if fear spirit, so something, something along those lines can can be, feel like an exchange, at least on the human side. And from the spirit side, that's also that's interesting. What could spirits do for people? I don't know. Let's let's uh let's go with that and see where that takes us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really one. that's really good. I love yeah f festivals. I love that's just like such a good way to like insert any kind of like lore world building um or just whatever cultural exchange in real life like you want to get to know people figure out how they already right what's important to mm. them what's like what's on their calendar because that has some sort of cultural significance but also like hmm, how do they get down taste the food right what's the give me the give me yes. the funnel cake give me the give me the thing that they only make on special occasions um, oh yes that 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 bit that those beats of floor are, are the most fun to to have they they make the world feel very real it's like an immersion through details i like that mm -hmm. uh so my character wants to foster an exchange between cultures some somewhat some kind of exchange yeah that makes I'm, I'm all for it and that's part that's perfect for like you know there's a there's a misunderstanding maybe or like a innate fear of the spirit realm or just like a, a complete blind spot um, and it's funny. I also like maybe because I've been like so fascinated with like the monsters that are that are in your PDF that like, yeah, there's you, you can co cultivate. It's not just about fighting off the rage and the fear. It's also like, yeah, we're going to have a cultural exchange and like bring more joy into the life of this village. Um, yeah, there's 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 two two sides to every coin. Um, yes. Right, the D12 is going to be like our, our call to adventure. Why are we? gonna go be an adventurer right now so i got a 10 10 is seeking power after subjugation Ooh, ooh! i just had a flash of the uh of, of the the character in the in the in their commercial for the kickstarter like it yeah yeah so um i wonder if if it's almost so there's um there's a thing in the book of spirits or in the spirit realm we have introduced several uh, spiritual phenomena. And essentially, these are um, 
patterns or things that happen that tie the two realms together. Mm -hmm. So there is one of these phenomena is called mist enclave. And it happens when the material plane and the spirit realm coincide. They kind of collapse onto one, one another and merge. Um, and when that happens, things get weird. And some pow very powerful spirits can change the landscape, even in the physical realm. So maybe something like that happened. Maybe we had uh, some spirit, some powerful spirit, uh, somehow created a mist enclave with their own power, and have taken the region that my character lives in, and it became a part of this uh, enclave. Mm. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um... So it's not a subjugation in the, like, we're not slaves of the, uh, of the spirits, but we are tra almost trapped in its domain. Um, there's a, there's a uh, fine line between, like, subjugation and, like, subject, right? It's the same, it's the same root there. So, like, the, 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 the king of, uh, disgust or whatever, <laughs> insert emotion here as, like, claims your region and you are subject of them it doesn't necessarily mean you are like uh chains to like have to break rocks all day or something yeah um yeah that's 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 interesting and it's again it's those um those connections and those like those places where the veil gets weak the 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 edge cases where these two things are interacting which is right i mean which is where our character lives with the emissary like that's yes that, that's where the adventure happens that's where the cool stuff's going on Absolutely. Uh, all right. So D8 Good. is going to give us our, our potential character arc, um, which will develop as we play through the game. You don't want to know exactly where your character is going, but like having some idea of a trajectory can help us like kind of lean back into one way so we can tr look for opportunities to go the other. Okay. Um, I so got a five. Five. Uh, a naive envoy to a shrewd Ooh. negotiator. I like that. So uh, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of her as a she. So maybe uh, she, you know, she thinks she can just go to that spirit king or the spirit lord or whatever and just convince them to, to just let them, you know, just let them be. Um, and, you know, she thinks maybe, maybe she can, you know, uh, hold a festival for them once a year or something like that and be chill with it. Um, and it's just going to work out that she doesn't have to worry about, you know, things, other, other things. It's, it's, it's going to be fine. I really like the uh, idea of like the, the, the rules are different. It's a different, not even just like culturally, societally, like it's a different, it's a different dimension, right? That this force that you're dealing with and like negotiating with is coming from. So like, uh, you, you present a perfectly reasonable argument, <laughs> right? But like, that doesn't, you know, even if it is like the, 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 the yeah. you are an emissary to like the king of joy and you're like, we're going to throw a party for you and you're going to let us uh, experience other emotions beyond a joy because we're getting exhausted <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, yep. And the king of joy is like, oh, that's perfectly reasonable. However, that is no fun. <laughs> yes. You um, present the perfect, perfectly reasonable suggestion to a perfect perfectly unreasonable entity mm -hmm. so um yeah they are defined by emotions mm. so the king of joy is it's almost like fey when we think about it you know how the fey are very mm -hmm. uh weird and you can't just expect things to work like they would with humans so spirit are also weird different weird um but they are governed by these emotions and the spirit like the king of joy for example, um, he'd ask you when, the, uh, like, he'd expect you to, to throw a party, but you don't, there's no end date to that party. Mm. Mm. Um, it's, it's already ongoing and, uh, like, there's no reason anyone would want to leave. So, I don't know. And mechanically, uh, as well, I mean, I guess it depends on the class. But if we, if we're, if we're talking about um, using like the 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 conduit, or maybe the emissary, I haven't seen the emissary. Like as you get um, more diverse schools of, or just different, you're pulling from different spirits, different elements of emotion. Perhaps you know, 
perhaps you're this goody two shoes joyous character to start um and as you go on adventures and maybe drop to zero a couple times or so you start to experience other emotions or right? yes exactly uh, you, and... you feel sadness you feel you get of course as a human or as a humanoid you 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 feel these feelings anyway but um being in tune with them is more of a, it's a it's something deeper mm. it's like you you embody that emotion for a while you understand it a lot better and then you can really bond and communicate with spirits of that type because mm -hmm. everybody feels sad when something doesn't work out um but it's not it's not the same type of sadness i think that would be enough to um really bond with these creatures yeah this is getting deep because like i think like forming connections with emotions especially for some of us more cerebral types <laughs> it's definitely that's a, that's a journey i've been on um all right, give me a D for this is a is a friendly faction. So this is a a group that we are maybe we're a part of, or maybe we just have like a, a relationship with. Um, I have a three. Three, the Embassy Club, a booth in a local tavern where other dignitaries meet and mingle. Ooh, I like it. Hmm. There's always like there's always somebody in the corner. So now there's a group of people. They have their little like you know it's maybe it's a table at the coffee shop or something if it's not the if it's not the bar yeah um, uh interesting like where from though um okay we have this place town city whatever and they it's it's um been taken over by spirits um everything changed and i i guess maybe these people are just you know they maybe they used to be um emissaries um diplomats from other nations and 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 countries and then when things changed they were like you know what i'm gonna stay here and just enjoy life mm. or um or maybe they they expect things to to be the same um and things aren't the same so they're not very happy but they still want to try and help so i guess maybe maybe this can be like a group who can potentially um my character could go to and could reach out to other countries to help with this dilemma. Maybe after she realizes that uh, the the naive solution is not going to cut it. Mm, mm. And I I love the idea that it's it could it could be from either direction, right? Like you took it as like these are emissaries from like the material plane, whatever. We're you know the 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 world that we have uh, started from that has like bled into or been bled into by the by the mist um so yeah someone is from like the rival nation they've come to negotiate a a, a peace treaty because that force is gonna maybe like invade and start a war and they got here and it's just like oh all i feel is joy <laughs> so now i hang out in this bar and i'm not gonna do my job and maybe now it's on the party to like <laughs> do these negotiations um, yes absolutely um also i guess you can also have spirits from other other kinds of spirits that can also be here, maybe. It raises like um, very interesting questions of like how do these uh, like, groups, factions, emotions, like spirits, like communicate with each other, right? Like, yeah, the emissary from uh, you know the, the 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 melancholy queen is you know crying in the corner of this bar all the time. <laughs> yes, absolutely, and that's that's wonderful, um, and. What else I had in mind? Oh, it was very, and, and I think you you got this very intuitively, but it was very important to us when designing everything that we don't um, assign uh, like morality mm. to emotions. Mm. So joy can be a good thing, often is, but it can also be a bad thing in ex in excess. Um, so for one of the examples that we have for joy enclaves in the book is that there's this place that when you go into, you feel joy and everything else about the world fades away and you don't, and you stop caring about the things that, uh, were important to you before. And you kind of just want to stay there forever, mm. uh, almost trapped in this, um, you know, uh, imaginary, idealistic, um, yes world so yeah i think i think um i think this can be the case here for some of the emissaries uh who who just you know 
that was their old thing. Now they're here and they're, they don't really care about the problems of the rest of the world. Maybe some of them had families, uh, but they're fine. Uh, you know, don't, mm. you don't need to worry about them. And with time, you kind of forget, maybe even forget who you were before. It's, uh, it's very interesting to play with, like, because intuitive, I, I mean, in this conversation, I've like leaned into and then corrected for like assigning like good emotions and bad emotions and like we're going to fight the rage demon. But like if you're a barbarian, rage is your whole thing, right? Like anger gets shit done. <laughs> yes. Anger you know? tells you what stands in your way to something important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anger informs you of what's important to you mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. it, it's you know it's uh it's it's important we, we have we have and feel all emotions mm. uh and this this book is an opportunity to explore all sides of them mm. Mm. love it um okay d6 right. we kind of zoom in a little bit and get a uh, a friendly npc a non-player character that we have some sort of yes uh beneficial relationship with Okay, I have a five. Five. Oh, Saze Sogdu, another stranger in a strange land. Oh, two friends, and secretly a sorcerer. Oh, I love little <gasps> tags like that. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, a secret, secret sorcerer. That's that's spicy right away. But what's uh, O's from somewhere else? Hmm. And maybe they're at this table in the bar. Maybe they're hanging out at the embassy club. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah, are part of they that. They could. They could. Um, are they um, from a strange land, as in like a, a, another country in the physical realm, or maybe they're a spirit um, of another emotion that is just does not really belong with joy, mm -hmm. um, or hmm. Yeah, could could be both. And again, I try to keep this stuff as like open ended as possible, so that like the player ends. We're into the side where like we're starting to to negotiate with the dungeon master here about what this stuff means. So like, if a player is like, I have this person who is uh, also in different ways, uh, like out out of place in this place, then the dungeon master could be like, oh, that's a dragonborn because there's very few dragonborn in my world, and they come from this region and. Yeah, that exactly. That this points is the to the adventure that. that I want you to go to anyway, or whatever the whatever the case may be. I'm kind of fascinated by like the the spirit realm and all the possibilities there, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, but well, I think so. So um, for it to be a spirit and have like a name and characteristic and you know personality that is very defined, it has to be a fairly a fairly strong spirit. Spirits become more intelligent and develop a personality the uh, a more complicated personality the more they grow in power so you know simple spirits are just wrath spirit wouldn't have a name they'll just be angry at you if they just formed so someone to go by osaza sugudo uh they have to be like um a more complicated being so if they are a spirit they could be uh, maybe a spirit of anticipation and uh, trust um or or it could be uh, yeah i think something like that could be fun uh but maybe maybe a trust spirits don't tend to keep secrets i don't know maybe who knows um or i mean i mean maybe they maybe they do maybe it's about because it's like it's not about the ideal so much as it is about like the emotion of it so like mm. O has a circle of trust right that's like that's oh that's the so like if you know they're a sorcerer because they trust you, and trust is their what well, their currency, their their most important uh, thing that they like dole out carefully. Um, yeah, I like that. So um, I think I think it could be fun to have like this a, a spirit ally essentially mm. um, to go with, uh, or it could be a character. I, I'm I'm not. I don't have like a specific uh, preference in this uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we don't. I mean, it could it could become like a, we can enlist them in the party or whatever. I kind of they have a class to a degree, but like they don't have to like. Oh, doesn't want to leave the bar. They're happy in this. You know, sitting at this table. They're trying. They've been talking to this. You know, spirit of sadness or whatever this dragonborn or both for a while, and they're gonna figure it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mechanically, it seems like it would be it's it's good to have friends <laughs> from the narrative side of things and from the mechanic side of things to have yep. someone back at home that you could like 
tap for information and knowledge and you know it doesn't have to be just in a fight um, right let's make them a spirit then if that's all right i mm -hmm. think maybe maybe then we can make my character could go to them for also for some insight about spirits um mm. because they have some trust between them and maybe she can learn more uh through that yeah i like that because you would to have uh a friendly npc who's like outside of the the faction of joy as we've made it or whatever the case may be like another emissary from the other side of the coin right you're a human or half elf or whatever you may be interacting with the spirit realm this is another direction of the spirit to spirit and they can clarify some things for you um why you why the the king of joy wants you to never stop party he <laughs> like that's for example or what would they simple. take for them to do or what could stop them i don't know mm -hmm. but yeah npcs drive right. stories uh d10 is a magic item or a meaningful object i have a four Ooh, the no hassles cloak oh, magically transforms appearance to match local clothing styles that feels very joyful to me actually yeah yeah don't have so, uh, local. That, that's fun a fam family heirloom maybe mm. Mm. yeah and it's like uh i had a flash of like um like a carnival kind of like the big feathery thing and then we yeah. go, and then we leave this like uh the 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 mists of joy that have you know permeated our home village and it becomes much more of like uh, a traveling cloak <laughs> so you don't look like a peacock walking down the road getting accosted by bandits or something yep um i i wonder if it's almost possible to kind of have this magical appearance to almost almost look like a spirit if if you don't look at me too close mm. uh, people might confuse me for uh for one of the ethereal entities as opposed to the um, humans and humanoids around i like that a lot i just had this uh i'm surprised i haven't talked about it already but like spirited away is very mm. this like weird cultural exchange where nothing quite makes sense and everything is like really appealing but really scary at the same time um yeah the idea of like we are blending in with spirits uh yeah that could be uh super useful in a D&D campaign but <laughs> so just make you feel a little more comfortable as a as a player running this character of like yep it's I'm i mean not instantly i don't smell like a mortal anymore <laughs> at first you'll probably wouldn't think she needs it you know being naive mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but after a while she'll figure out that maybe maybe she does maybe she does or like like she takes it for granted, right? And you don't quite understand how useful something like that could be, um, because you you grew up in the yeah. world of joy, right? And then you leave it and find out not everyone's as accepting <laughs> or as fun. Mm. Right. Ooh, I like uh, that. Uh, all right, we're we're gonna switch hats. We're gonna we're gonna turn the page here, or scroll down in this case, um, and we're gonna go to the to the more the dungeon master side of things, where we are we are building adventure scenarios um and like the rest of the world uh based on the inspirations of this character um so we're gonna you can roll four d6s or you can roll a d6 uh one at a time um but the the first thing we're gonna do is an antagonistic organization so a faction that is uh not exactly our best buds uh i got a two two the warhawks a cabal of business owners who profit off of the conflicts they seed mm. Ooh. Interesting. So yeah, war profiteers in a place that has been infiltrated by joy are probably doing a lot less business. And they're trying to get Ooh. they're trying to get back to business as usual, maybe. Yeah. I mean, um they could try to bring other spirits in. Um and make them contest for the place in a confrontation as opposed to um getting along mm. Mm. yeah because maybe that's the, the 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 other table at the bar <laughs> right across from the uh the emissaries of spirits trying to you know form bonds of communication and stuff these guys are trying to create uh war essentially because they are spirits of anger and strife and yeah maybe maybe they could be spirits they could be just 
maybe humans who realize that if they actually bring real war into here, um, joy is going to lose and everyone's going to lose, but they will have business. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. There's some some faction trying to like reclaim this uh, little, little colony of joy and drive drive the spirits out. Yeah, so yeah but like... in a way that is uh, destructive, mm -hmm. and which is stands very much in opposition to what I try to do as an emissary. Hmm. Hmm. Oh God, love it. Perfect. Um okay, another D6 for uh, uh an NPC uh enemy or a rival. This could be the big bad evil guy, or this could be like the person that made fun of us in middle school. And it, yeah, it wouldn't, have it wouldn't be good to find him. Uh the Baron Cracks, a xenophobic noble who believes in a hierarchy of peoples with his kind on top. Oh, the yeah, it's what side Ooh. of this divide. Are they on? That's a, that's like my first question. I was like, spirit or <laughs> mm -hmm. material? I guess it depends if they're related to the Warhawks or not. Ooh, um, that, yeah, he could be the... If he, yeah, if he's like the leader of the Warhawks, he could be like uh, the xenophobic aspect being we, we hate spirits. Hmm. Uh we need to t to reclaim uh, this place for us. Mm. Yeah, people over by any means necessary. Um, yeah, and that's how, and we are trying to build a bridge between those groups. Essentially, like we are exploring, but also like trying to facilitate the connection of the spirit and the material, the mortal. Um, and this guy's like, no, thank you. <laughs> no, let's, thank you. Let's drive them we off. Just, we just want to, we, we just want things to be back to where they were, but with us on top. Mm -hmm. And if uh, half the people die in the process, that's fine. Mm -hmm. A necessary evil. Um, spicy. All right, give me another D6 for an evocative location. Um, I got a five. Five. The Bald Crag, exposed cliff where monstrous bands meet to form often uneasy alliances. Mm. Okay. Often uneasy alliances. So... Monstrous bands being like monstrous uh, species, like uh, goblinoids, orcs, well, orcs are not really. Um, trolls. Could could be this is this is your world, man. I'm just I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, the thing is that um, the Book of Spirits can be brought into any D and D world. So so many of these aspects could be just anything that would fit in a D and D world. So it could be uh, trolls, ogres, um, everything else. We it, it's still it's still there. So. Um, and maybe this is the stuff that we have forgotten about, right? The the joy has suffused this place, and we're we're negotiating like how many festival days we have versus how many work days we have, so we don't starve to death <laughs> and stop tending the fields. And meanwhile, the world around is still happening. So, like up there on the cliff, yeah, is the goblin, the hobgoblin warlord, is like arranging uh, alliances to come swoop in. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they might be able to get an alliance with the Warhawks uh, mm -hmm. if we're not careful. God, yeah. Because even if, like, it's just, it benefits them. I mean, one, they're trying to, you know, if there's a if there's an enemy, then we're going to sell more swords and armor. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. two, if there's an enemy, there's less time for joy. Joy, you know, the, the spirit realm fails to defend us from this you know, monstrous war band. Uh, Very real threat that doesn't care about how we feel and doesn't want us to party with it. Mm. Uh. <laughs> That's the interesting thing, too, of, like, how the... how a third party kind of interacts with this idea, right? Like, I always... I like having... Especially when introducing new new elements, right? Like, if I'm, if I'm introducing this... Uh, like the Book of Spirits into my ongoing campaign, um, having like some 
you know, here's here's a troll interacting with the spirit that we get to like yes. observe and like d- demonstrate as a DM demonstrate what's going on, and as the players choose how to engage with it as well. Um, you know, we can sit back and watch and see what this thing's about. We can follow it home and see what that looks like. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we wrote, I think, once a spirit of conquest, which was one of the, a very powerful spirit. Um, and essentially, this, this spirit could actually create or I- empower paladins to take the oath of conquest. Mm. Um, it would... It's it's a big one, and it's it's uh, it's formed only rarely, but if it does, having it form around a band of hobgoblins mm. or a clan of hobgoblins who is very uh, warmonger, like war- warmongering, and um, all about expanding their rule, mm. that could fit. Interesting, and we as the emissary could be trying to like rally other spirits to you know countermand the the, the hobgoblins on our side and the the growing power of the spirit of conquest um this is interesting. we we okay so we we, we have so many rich, things <laughs> we formed a very rich world here and i'm almost afraid that this is this is going to be like a one off um because again i am obsessed with this the the the, the how, how many monsters are in the book i know i keep coming back um, to the monsters, but we bunch. have 50 yeah. we have 50 um right off the bat and we have several stretch goals that will increase the number um to maybe 60 70 80 uh, right. who knows all right you heard it here first folks go pledge more spirit world monsters and all sorts of other good stuff um so let's see we might have to overlay one of those onto this or maybe the, again there's everything else is still at, the, at play here in a in a dnd 5e campaign uh what do we get on a d6 for a thematic monster for our spirit emissary i got another five five the psionic siren aberrant envoy claiming to seek allies really seeking slaves and subjects oh wow Ooh. I mean that that feels very easy to like sh- shift a tiny bit into the into the spirit realm, but it could be there's other planes of existence too. Yep, they're there. Everything in the in the exists as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can we can actually have it be an aberration, um, and it's it may be very interesting to think about the role of aberrations in a world where there's spirits and how that kind of works. Um, I don't know. That's interesting. Um, it would probably be easier to to make to tie it to one of the other things. So either tie it to the joy, um, spirits, or perhaps the conquest spirit. Um, it does. It feels very conquery of like. This maybe maybe this is the um this is this is the spirit we see interacting with the hobgoblins, right? It's not just yeah. it's not we're we're not watching a combat here. We are watching uh a, 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 a dark yeah. mirror of like the cultural exchange that we're having on our side of like if you join with us the 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 spirit of conquest can like fuel your rise um but they're just like the hobgoblins are getting used right there's always there's always a bigger big bad mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you climb up the tiers so yep. you, you yeah but i like i like it that there is tension between the, these factions like the the hobgoblins might work with the spirit of conquest but there might be repercussions for that and things that they don't know so there is room to kind of get to wiggle in between them and and um you know change their minds and that's why this is all built around like the 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 player character archetypes. Because if I have an emissary, I have someone like some person at the table has created a, I would assume some sort of like a charismatic character, or they're looking for that kind of like political interaction, right? And that doesn't have to take over the game, but I have to get that in there. So like having the the bad guys uh, not be one monolithic thing that we can't talk to and have to kill, but like 
there's inroads here if we're if we're smart and persuasive um yeah perhaps we can convince the hobgoblins that it is not in their best interest to be working with the, the spirit of conquest and the warhawks here um ooh, i want to yeah this is <laughs> this is good i like this one a lot i want to run this um all right we, i don't again i don't know if we need it by the time we get here but give me a d20 this is a plot hook because we always need plot hooks especially i run a very yeah. sandboxy game um so this again could be a, a little side quest or this could tie the whole thing together I have a 17. 17. A heraldic beast has been spotted for the first time in centuries. Its fate has prophetic implications. Ooh, that's out of left field. Let's see. I don't know if it's been spotted for the first time in centuries. Its fate has prophetic implications. So like the... And again, the first question is, is that, is that spirit or is that like the, the, the classic <laughs> fantasy? Like, oh, it's the it's the white Be heart. dragon. Or Phoenix. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um, maybe it's a dragon, and that kind of led the hobgoblins to go out to war. Maybe it's uh, some sort of um, thunderbird that is has meaning to uh, to my town and home, and maybe in times before. Um, and now it kind of reminds us of who we were. Um. I like that because, like the the phoenix is like cyclical, and the thunderbirds is, is a separate thing. But they're, I mean, there's like joy, there's joy in there, but it's like that's a complex emotion of like it's conquest plus joy almost, right? Like it could be this like uh, like this uh war like oh dude, and we have we have warhawks on the table. We got mm -hmm. warhawks on the table, and all of a sudden the, the the thunderbird shows up, and it's like, okay, what is this? What does this mean? Even the warhawks are like, oh shit! <laughs> like I thought, I thought they were only a legend. Um, yeah, and again, that doesn't feel like doesn't feel like level one things. That feels like maybe something we would introduce from the dungeon master side as like, okay, we're starting to resolve these threads. Maybe they have successfully like diffused the situation with the hobgoblins one way or another. And like now the Thunderbird comes in or the dragon wakes up, right? Or like yep. the hobgoblins tell you they're here because they were pushed out of their land because this thing. Um and well, welcome to tier two, baby. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Nice. Um Man, this is this is a whole campaign. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I yeah, uh, that's very, very exciting. I would love to, yeah, I would love to to take this. And ooh, book of spirits very soon, and uh, yeah, run a whole a whole a whole world out of this. Um, all right, let's go to let's go back to the big screen, and uh, I've got thank you so much for joining me. First of all, uh, I've gotten a lot of I've gotten a lot of joy <laughs> out of good out of I'm, out of this. I mean, this was a blast. Thank you so much for inviting me. I I love uh practices and creativity and um well sharing about this world that we have been developing for quite a while um this this really shows the storytelling potential that this has right this is the best way to tell people about it is showing them what you can build with this um and i love these character building questions these are great Mm, mm. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, you links in the link for yeah. Go check out my stuff, please. But no, go support <laughs> the Book of Spirits, um, because the the more of us who do, the bigger and better it's going to be. And that's how Kickstarters work, folks. So yes, please go support. Uh, if you are watching this in the in the future, then uh, yeah, go. Those links are going to point to where you can get your hands on this awesome product. We've Again, I very much focused on the uh, the flavor because do do I love the flavor here? But there's a lot of crunch that I didn't really talk about too much. Like there are the mechanical tie-ins. There are really like again the monster stat blocks. There's just interesting abilities that proc the the subclass we barely talked about and like so uh, spoilers or something is so tell tell me more about the emissary where is that just like is Ooh. that a patron exclusive is that a stretch goal is that um, like episodes like you know another so edition? I, I kind of imagine this being the next big thing mm -hmm. somewhere in the next uh, I don't even imagine it being a stretch goal although if we if we run out of ideas for stretch goals 
Uh, I'm not saying like we we may push that, but the emissary, um, if the conduit is a half caster, the emissary is more full caster. Mm -hmm. They would mm -hmm. be the um, the character who has the 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 ability to essentially mechanically wise they could uh, put spirits on the battlefield in certain locations and then create effects mm. from that from these locations so it could either be like um uh, something that empowers people around it maybe damages people around it maybe you could cast spells through these spirits um your spell casting can also be affected by the spirits that you have um i'm not sure what the word will use it's maybe a bond as well mm. uh that you have that you bond with uh, can affect the spells that you can even prepare. Uh, so you have to really think what kind of what kind of emotion you want to bring in. Um, I imagine these being a bit more, uh, however, um, not as flexible as the conduit. You don't just change them around. Mm. An emissary makes a bond with with a specific spirit, and that and they take it with them. I like that. Um, Again, the yeah. the limitations invoke creativity. Um, and if you're talking about, yeah, forming forming a deeper relationship with this this spirit of like an emotional or like a memory, um, or this like, and the spirit can grow and change too as we go. Spirits are mutable creatures; they are affected by the emotions and memories around them. Maybe your adventures can actually change the spirit, create new aspects for it. Um, kind of a a way for the DM to reflect on the developments of your character and show them to you as a mirror through that spirit. And I um, I love that. So I mean, I know this is whatever. I'm gushing. I'm gonna keep gushing. Uh, um, that's <laughs> that's built in to, to the class that's there already. If I mean, like, I don't. It's obviously intentional. I don't know if everyone would see it immediately, but like the as the conduit is advancing, there are. RPGs are all about like getting incrementally better, but having that happen because of what we've done, not just like, oh, I've got X amount of XP because I've got this treasure or I killed this monster or whatever, but like having it just right there in easy reach built into the system of like my character had this kind of experience and now they can do this kind of thing because they have learned and grown and evolved or like been scarred by what they went through that is ooh, good that's the best part yeah. i love that yes i i enjoy that deeply and that actually is true for any character in in the world not just the conduit if you bring the spirit realm in you can do that with every character um you, you will have back will have backgrounds uh, that are tied to the spirit realm. So you can have a fighter who has some history with that as well. Um, you don't need to be like this uh, all-powerful mage to actually interact with spirits. And I think that's, that's, that's nice because it gives people who aren't that class also gives them a, a chance to, to shine and interact and, um, you know, enjoy this setting. I love it. Everybody go support it so it's bigger and better. I can't wait to get my hands on the whole thing. I got again, thank you so much for joining us. Go support Beyond the Screen on Kickstarter, the very rich, powerful Patreon that we didn't even really talk about. A uh, wonderful YouTube channel. So yeah, go out, go out there uh, and and support this wonderful creative person to make more and awesome uh, follow, stuff. share, like this video. Um for a lot more great interviews. Um Ryan, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. It was it was a real it was a real joy. I appreciate you, man.